You know, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck love working together. I mean, just film after film after film, they keep coming back to each other. But was this one any good? Well, let's talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for my movie review for The Last Duel. And if this is your first time finding me and you happen to like the video, please give me that thumbs up and consider subscribing. So I remember when I first saw the trailer for this movie, I was like, okay, we got Matt Damon, Adam Driver, Ben Affleck, directed by Ridley Scott. You know, hey, I I'm going to check this out. And the trailer actually looked good too. So I was pretty excited about it. But then when we got closer up to this release, I forgot about it. I'm like, okay, that last duel movie, is that actually something that I want to check out? Will it be worth my time? And I watched the trailer again and I was excited. I was okay. Okay. Yeah. I remember this looks darn good. I'm going to check this out. I'm going in really, really looking forward to this. So like I said, I'm a fan of the cast. I'm a fan of the director. So I was on board with this. Just wanted to see some old school medieval fighting and dueling and stuff like that. I'm an action guy. I'm a, I like fighting all this stuff. I'm on board. Let's go. But before I get into all the nitty gritty, let me tell you exactly what this film is all about. King Charles VI declares that Knight Jean de Carouge settles his dispute with his squire by challenging him to a duel. So one of the first things that you'll notice if you go in and just do a little bit of research on this film, of course, that is rated R is going to have strong graphic violence and also strong nudity and sex scenes. And we'll get to that in a second. But the graphic violence, y'all know I love action. I'm an action guy. I love seeing somebody get their heads chopped off. I mean, if it warrants itself in the story. This is like the 14th century here. You know, they're fighting over land, resources, etc. So there's duels, source fights, charges, things like that. And the battles that Whitley Scott is able to I put, I said Whitley Scott, Ridley Scott is able to put together within this film were phenomenal. They were just as good or maybe even better than they were in Gladiator. I know they sing a lot, but that's just how I honestly feel. He really does know how to zoom in to where you can hear every grunt, every bone break every gasp every stab all that and he shows it swords going through people's heads and necks and all types of stuff like that it, it is pretty graphic and so if you want to see stuff like that then this film is right for you but that's the thing though while there is that graphic violence in this film it wasn't even necessary it was like an added bonus because i was already attached to the characters in the story that they was talking about in this film so when we did get to see those action scenes it was like an extra bonus. I was like, oh, okay, hey, thanks for giving me the cherry on top with this action right here. I didn't need it. I was engaged in the story, but this just makes it even better. And then again, like later on in the film, while I'm watching this dialogue play out between the characters and the story develop, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm engaged. But then they'll cut away to some action scene. I'm like, oh, okay, well, hey, thanks again, you know, for the extra amount of pleasure I, I wasn't asking for, but I'll take it. So that is just something that I like right there. Now, when you have when you're telling a story, you know that there are three parts to a story. Um, there's one side, the side A, the side B, and then there's the truth. OK, and that is the way this story is told. They go over the same series of events over a number of years. I say maybe like a decade and a half, maybe two decades of just kind of showing bit not Ben Affleck's character, but Matt Damon's character, Jean, Sir Jean de Carouge. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, they're just kind of just going around, you know, talking about his life, just trying to show him as a man, you know, a husband, if he's going to be able to bear offsprings and the way he fits in society as far as like the hierarchy of power. And when we're getting to know this character in the story, they go a little bit into the politics, the economics of just how everything works. And that was just fascinating to me, you know, since this took place hundreds of years ago in the 14th century, of course, just seeing how different 
different. They do things today as opposed to back then. And I liked his character. Now, the acting from Matt Damon wasn't the best. It was a little off. But at the same time, I still liked his character, you know, especially given the time that he was in. You know, his behavior wouldn't be accepted in today's world. I don't think anybody's would because, you know, there were just a, a different time. Things that were accepted back then would not be accepted today. But I did find myself attached to his, his character. Now, his makeup with his like mullet wig or whatever really wasn't working with, for me at all. It was kind of distracting. OK, also, Matt Damon is not able to wear uh, a grow facial hair. And they had to use, you know, a bunch of makeup and prosthetics to, you know, put, you know, give him a beard during certain scenes. And he got a rash. And like after every scene, they had to like use an ice pack to keep the swelling down. It's very unfortunate, you know, and I'm just like, wow, sometimes people just don't know what a performer goes through, you know, when they're trying to uh, deliver a role on screen. So that's just kind of on a side note, something that he had to go through. But you know, while the acting wasn't the best, you know, I did enjoy his character. Now, when it comes to Adam Driver, I did enjoy his character for the most part up until the end. You know, uh, he, he was just great. He's a great actor and he was great in this film, too. And as far as Ben Affleck is concerned, he was supposed to be, you know, part of the main lead on opposite of Matt Damon. But there was a scheduling conflict. And so Adam Driver came in to fill those shoes. And I liked the substitution. At first, I really didn't recognize Ben Affleck in this. You know, he had a blind go tea with a you know blonde wig and it was only about the midpoint of the film i was like oh yeah that's ben affleck i barely recognized him but the roles that he did you know with himself and also adam driver you know it was stellar and i i really did enjoy that now somebody that i enjoyed even more than all three of those is jody comer somebody i'm not familiar with her name was marguerite de carouges and she is the wife of of Matt Damon in this film. She had the best performance in this whole movie. I enjoyed her role thoroughly in this. And I am interested in seeing what other films that she's been a part of that I've never heard of before. You know, but I I, I did I did enjoy her as an addition in this film right here. The what she went through in this film with other women in this film, there's just so many injustices that goes on that are just completely ignored. I mean, that happens today in 2021. So you can just imagine how that that happened, you know, back in the 14th century. I mean, in, in some cases, rape was just accepted. I mean, they were just like, okay, hey, if you was raped, there's just no big deal. And this film does have to deal with rape. And those scenes are uncomfortable. I didn't like watching them. I, I think everybody would agree with me, you know, in that feeling right there, you know, but that's just something that she had to go through um, in this story that is based on the true story. And her telling her side of the story was very, very convincing. You know, it was. And it's just really interesting how, you know, someone can tell a certain story, but just from the slightest details uh, can make a big difference on the outcome of that. And when you have side A, side B and C trying to tell their own, trying to tell the same story, but from completely different perspectives, I mean, you know, the outcome is vast on what you can end up with at the very, very end. And that is the main thing that this film right here is, you know, going through. But just going back to the action of this film, guys, you know, I, I absolutely love that. I love seeing them duel. I love the sword fights. And it was very intense. I mean, the sound mixing and design and this film right here was stellar. And this is a long film. It is two hours and 32 minutes and you will feel the length, but it wasn't boring. You know, I, I was really interested in saying like, oh, OK, we're done with one chapter now. OK, let's watch that again from a completely different perspective. And so if you are interested, you know, in old stories hundreds of years ago and medieval times and 14th century, 13th century duels and all of that hot jazz right there, I think you'll have a good time with this. If you're a fan of Adam Driver, Ben Affleck, Leg and Matt Damon, I think you will have a good time. If you're a fan of Ridley Scott, I think you will have a good time. If you just want to see a good movie that is a period piece, check it out. I don't think you will be disappointed. I give my rating for this at the very end, but guys, again, that is just my pen, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked the video, please go ahead and give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to help me reach 35,000 subscribers. But if I had to rate The Last Duel out of a 1 out of 10, I'm going to give this film... I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. Yeah, I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. But guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.